Hi, and welcome to this edition of Ask the Experts. I'm Jeff Hatzel, a product manager of Blue Marble, responsible for Global Mapper Pro and the R&D team. Today, we're going to take a look at scripting in Global Mapper, both Global Mapper script and Python. Scripting has come a long way um, from the original command parameter based language uh, that is Global Mapper script as I did in text file. Uh, now we have a built in script editor with syntax highlighting, uh, with full Python support, and a script builder to record commands while working in the UI. So today's workflow is going to focus on recording a certain process in the UI so that I can automate it in the future. And the goal here is to essentially do something once, save out the script for an automated process so that I can do it without launching a uh, global mapper and having to manually run these workflows. So let's go ahead and take a look. Before getting started with my workflow, I want to make sure that I have the script builder open and running. Uh, so what this tool will do is it will record any commands that I uh, execute in the application here um, that can also be scripted. And this is generally speaking, um, you know, more things such as analysis tools and the import and export of data, right? Things that don't necessarily require a UI. So we're not gonna record the change of color or something, right? Because when you're scripting, there is no UI. So that's not something that'll be recorded, but all of our analysis and our settings and things like that. The script builder launches in its recording state, so we know we're recording as we get going. And then as I go ahead and open some data files here, what we'll see is that those actions will be recorded in the script builder. Uh, the reason we see three layers imported here is because my GMP file references two uh, original LAS files or LAZ files. So the goal of this workflow is to take a look uh, at these point clouds and in reference to the previously surveyed, uh, so this is a right of way area for the um, power line and railroads here. And so what we want to determine is uh, based on this new LIDAR scan, how do the surveyed bounds match the physical bounds that we're seeing on the ground, right? Over time, um, maybe the right of way gets a little larger, maybe it gets overgrown and, and cleared in. And so we want to understand how the two relate. Now I'm looking at one small subset of data here. The goal being I'll record everything I do, save it to a script. And then in the future, as we get more and more data, we can run a script to do all of this work and produce our outputs. The first thing we're going to do here is create a DTM so that we have a representation of the terrain surface to work with. And in this case, since we're working with the ground, I want to make sure that I'm filtered to ground and I'll leave all my other settings um, as default for this example. We'll see that'll run pretty quick. We'll have a new command listed in the script builder and we'll also now have a new layer listed or shown here in our control center with that data displayed. This actually looks like pretty high res data um, coming from that point cloud, right? We can even see what looks like the railroad ties, but we'll zoom back out here a little bit. And so once this layer is created, now I have the ability to um, go ahead and identify the boundaries of this corridor here. And I think the easiest way to do this or a way that I'm gonna to attempt to do this is by generating contours right in this area of interest. So here is my corridor boundary file. And what I'm going to do is generate contours and I'm going to do it restricted to that bounds. We're going to make half meter contours for, for this scenario. Uh, right? We have a pretty small elevation range here, so it doesn't seem like a crazy uh, fine scale analysis to run. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. The result of that process, again, we see it recorded in the script builder. And now I have um, <clears throat> those two contour lines that I was looking for representing the boundary uh, of the right of way. And we'll zoom in. We see they line up pretty closely to, to the surveyed area, but, um, you know, maybe 
lack of maintenance, just time and growth of grass and shrubs and everything, it has gotten a little narrower than the previously surveyed boundary. I'm going to stop recording for a second just so we can talk about what the script builder has done for us. So for each of the commands that I enacted, the script builder has recorded them along with their corresponding parameters. So when I wrap up this process in terms of my analysis and export the data, that's going to get recorded as well. So the first thing I might do is export this terrain layer uh, to save as reference. And I'm going to do that to the global mapper grid format. Uh, that's just a format we use within Global Mapper. It's a little bit more optimized, and I'll overwrite this previous test file that I was working with. So we see that export is saved, and if I do the same with the contours, <clears throat> I'm going to export those probably to shapefile, and we'll call those contours. And so now I have those saved as well and part of my script builder. So for this step, my analysis is complete. And what I want to continue doing then is looking at how I can go from script builder commands to a more complete script. I can launch the built-in script editor directly from the builder, and it's going to carry over all of my commands with the associated parameters. Although I recorded in the script builder in Global Mapper Script, I can toggle that to Python. We'll see the, some of the language and parameters change here. And I could launch the script again. So now I have that script. But in Python, rather than just Global Mapper Script. And so this becomes really handy, especially when we want to um, maybe work with other Python libraries. So you'll see, right, when that launches, we import the global mapper Python library, but maybe you work with a variety of other Python libraries you might want to import, or maybe you want to work strictly in your own development environment um, outside of this global mapper script editor. You could save this file out right to a Python file and work with it in any, um, you know, dedicated development environment that you want where I might start editing this script for use with um, more data would be maybe changing the import options. And what I'll do here is maybe I would set this to loop through a variety of data. So rather just importing that one set of point cloud data in the right of way, importing it all, running the elevation of creation, and then running the contour generation followed by those exports so that I've only had to do this once in the UI. The script is now saved out as a Python file and whatever edits I made would be retained as well if I save it. And then I have the ability to um, run through this process without ever having to launch Global Mapper. It could be automated so that maybe daily or weekly, whenever you get your new data, you could have the script run and update the data. And I could do the exact same thing on the Global Mapper script side as well. Save out the language, run it whenever I need to and have a nice and easy way at which I have automated my workflows. All right. So thank you for joining us today. I hope this provided some insight and maybe some inspiration for all the ways that scripting can help automate workflows in Global Mapper. If you'd like to learn more about scripting in Global Mapper or any other components within the application, please feel free to check out our website, bluemarblegeo.com. Thanks.